Um, a lot of us eat a lot of protein. We want to make sure we're hitting our health goals to build muscle. And the Consumer Reports just did a big study where they tested a lot of different protein founder powders and they created a scale of which ones contain alarming amounts of lead and which ones are a bit safer to consume. And we're going to discuss all of this and analyze it with Dr. Neil Winnower um, and from Emory School of Medicine. Dr. Winnower, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So, Dr. Winnower, understandably, a lot of people are concerned about this Consumer Reports um, testing of protein powders. Can you break down for us? They found a couple. I think it was two protein powders that you should avoid at all costs. And after that, it's it's kind of a scale, if you will, of how much lead is in each one after that. Can you discuss a little bit of those findings? Yes, but before I even go into specifics, one thing to keep in mind is that the plant-based protein powders were the ones that contain lead, significant amounts. The dairy ones with whey protein really was nine times less. The plant-based ones were nine times more, and that's because iron is an element that's found in the core of the earth, and it's in the soil. So when you grow plants, you get some lead in those plants. Uh, but the concentrating process of the plant-based proteins, the dehydrating and the processing, really causes those lead levels to, to rise. And, and we can get into specifics which ones, but the Consumer Reports article clearly has those marked and labeled in two in particular. Uh, one was, I think, uh, Yule product and also was Naked Nutrition, if I remember correctly. But I think it's right there for, for all of us to go see and look at. Yeah, you know, Dr. Winnower, you're exactly right. It was Huel, I'm looking at it. It was Huel, the Black Edition protein powder, and the Naked Nutrition, which was the vegan mass gainer. It's a green label. Um, and both of those two products were the ones that just tested incredibly high for lead. And I'd like to back up just a little bit here, if we could. And can you explain a little bit what is lead and why is it so harmful for us? So if we're trying to avoid this, like, why, why does this cause a scare? Yeah, well, lead is in the Earth's crust, as I mentioned. It's everywhere, and and when we look at it, it's not just in foods, it's in pipes, it's in materials that are processed. It's all around us, and there's really no safe, acceptable lead levels. You should minimize it if possible. The thing about lead is it's chronic exposure, which is the key, and because lead is also prominent in some chocolates and teas and if you have that from time to time, it's not a big deal. But the issue with protein powder is people use that as a lifestyle. Every day they're taking protein powder. And if you can't metabolize lead, uh, and Consumer Reports found that two-thirds of, of these protein powders had what they would call uh, exceeding what they would say would be the typical safe amount for the day. And that's more than... 0.5 micrograms of, of lead in, in the powders. And we don't metabolize it. It builds up. The big issue is in really young kids whose nervous system are still developing and in pregnant women, uh, that can cause issues developmentally, cognitively, neurologically. Those are the big ones. And then in anybody who takes it too over time, it can cause issues in the cardiovascular system. It can cause rises in blood pressure. It can get mm. into the bones. It probably is a carcinogen as well. It can cause kidney problems. Essentially, it can affect almost all parts of the body over time and in high enough levels over time. And that's what we're really talking about. Not like one day or a week, but if you're taking this over a long period of time, this is the concern. So, Dr. Winnower, as we move forward from this, uh, you know, looking at that Consumer Reports article and, and looking at their results, definitely helpful to kind of understand, hey, is this a protein powder I consume regularly? How much should I limit it? You know, that sort of thing. You know, another question I'm thinking of here is if people are looking at ways to keep themselves healthy, would it be advisable to try to get protein from more whole food sources like, you know, nuts, fish, legumes, you know, meats, that sort of thing. And I guess if you are vegan, you would rely more on legumes and other plant sources. But would whole food sources be a better way to avoid this than maybe protein powders? 
Well, this is a great question, and it gets kind of to the take-home point as far as what should we do about it. The first thing is to not panic, okay? This is uh, just uh, to, something to be aware of. And what's interesting about it, too, before we get into specifics on food, is that the FDA does not regulate supplements the way they regulate drugs. For a, for a prescription drug to come out, it has to be proven to be safe. The same does not exist for supplements. They're considered food products. So therefore, it's on the FDA afterwards if something is harmful to put labels on it. And I think the FDA really needs to sink their teeth into this and really provide helpful guidance for to consumers. And from what you said, in general, we should be getting our protein mostly from food sources. So just like you mentioned, legumes, lentils, uh, egg whites, poultry, fish. There's a lot of protein sources that we can be incorporating into our diet for the majority of people. If you want to supplement with protein powders, I don't think this study says they should be absolutely not taken. I just think you should be mindful of how many servings you're taking per week and which ones have the higher amounts because not all of these plant-based protein powders also are created equal. Some have much more lead in them than others. But in general, a good way to do it too, if you're somebody who does take protein powder every day, you should really be incorporating whey protein. It might be difficult for those who are lactose intolerant, uh, but those who are not, whey protein doesn't have the same lead concerns as plant-based protein powders. But if you're taking a plant-based protein powder, just mix it up. Don't take it every day. I, I think that's advisable. And in general, get your protein from food sources. That's really the, the best advice I can give. Dr. Winower, this has been so helpful. I really appreciate you breaking it down for us, letting us know what to expect. I think uh, I'm definitely going to go home and check my pantry and compare it. And I'm not going to panic, but I'm just going to kind of take stock and say, how often am I consuming this and how can I find a healthy balance? So thank you. Okay, my, my, my pantry, I, I got two jugs of protein powder yeah. right now, you know? <laughs> Me too. Uh, and, uh, so I, I, I'm not throwing it out. I'm not throwing it out, but like, like you, like you just said, just be mindful of it and yeah. go forward with this information in a useful way. Dr. Winnower, thank you so much. We appreciate your time this afternoon.